the F-Type. It's not only a sports car, it's a Jaguar sports car. The difference is important. Don't expect a racetrack refugee, but don't expect a luxury GT either, the kind of car sporting fans of the brand previously had so often to be satisfied with. Think instead of what an Austin Healey or a Triumph TR6 might be like reinterpreted for the modern era. A coupe, or as in this case a roadster, designed very much for the road. A machine you can't help but want to drive, and drive hard. That's more than ever what an F-Type can be, thanks to widespread improvements that have broadened its appeal. A true sports car, a real sports car, should pump the blood around a little faster long before the pedal hits the metal. This one does. It weighs a little more than its rivals, so handling isn't quite as agile as some competitors, but it's still fun to drive, especially when you select the provided dynamic mode and everything sharpens up. Engine-wise, there are now three basic units on offer, uh, the original all-supercharged V6 and V8 petrol lineup having been joined by an entry-level four-cylinder two-litre turbo variant in mid-2017. Uh, that lighter baseline model offers 300 PS and comes only with a quick-shift eight-speed auto gearbox and rear-wheel drive. At the top of the range, the 550 PS F-Type R and 575 PS F-Type SVR models also use the auto box, but they have to have all-wheel drive. Here, though, we're trying the 3-litre supercharged V6 engine that the majority of customers opt for in either 340 PS or this 380 PS guise. With a V6, you get the option of a classic manual gearbox, or you can stick with the quick-shift auto and get the option of all-wheel drive. Either way, you're probably going to want to stretch up from entry-level trim uh, to this particular model's more desirable R-Dynamic spec, uh, a move which gets you three of the key F-Type features that most customers want. Adaptive dynamics, adjustable damping, uh, larger 19-inch wheels, and a switchable active exhaust system that emphasizes what is probably this car's most endearing attribute, namely the noise it makes. Now, you can hear that so much better, of course, if you switch from a coupe body style to this convertible and you can raise or lower the hood in this uh, in just 12 seconds at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. Inevitably if you go for the four cylinder derivative uh, that exhaust melody isn't quite as addictive but uh, that variant is of course significantly more efficient managing 39.2 mpg on the combined cycle and 163 grams per kilometer of CO2. It's said that every piece of design should tell a story. Well, that was certainly true of Jaguar's last proper sports roadster, the E-Type. That was once described by Enzo Ferrari as the world's most beautiful car. So, what would the great man have made of this, its modern-day successor? Well, whether you choose this car in coupe form or in this convertible guise, uh, the shape is certainly interesting. It's a complex mix that references past elegance and future technology, while at the same time also clearly underlining Jaguar's determination to go its own way and offer something different. The main aesthetic change with this facelifted model is found here at the front, where large mesh-trimmed single air intakes at each lower corner uh, replace the previous double apertures. So time to grasp one of these lovely pop-out door handles. These are there to provide what Jaguar calls a mechanical handshake and experience this car from within. Certainly very firmly driver orientated in here. Uh, the two front occupants are separated by this prominent grab handle which sweeps down for the top of the centre console and wraps around behind a proper joystick shaped sports shift gear selector. The main interior change made to this revised model relates to these new ergonomically optimised slimline seats uh, which now feature lightweight magnesium alloy frames and more supportive backrest bolsters. And uh, we also approve of the small diameter three-spoke leather trim steering wheel, which frames a brace of analog instruments, and those are separated by a TFT information screen. Anything you want to know that this can't tell you will probably be covered by the infotainment touchscreen in the centre of the dash. Now, this 8-inch Touch Pro setup is vastly better than the rather outdated system that this model featured at its original launch. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Now, you won't be expecting the trunk area of this convertible model to be anything like as accommodating as it is in the F-Type Coupe, and you'll be absolutely right. Uh, total capacity falls from the 407-litre total offered by the fixed-top variant to just 196 litres here. 
It's hard not to have preconceptions about what this Jaguar might be like, especially if you're the kind of buyer who might ordinarily prefer a German branded sports car. Now we came to this test with just such a preference, but we've ended it understanding afresh just why this F-Type is such an appealing prospect. Jaguar needed to find a younger, more demanding, hungrier audience for its sports cars. It needed to convince people like us that here and now, in this market, at this time in history, it could be great again. Mission accomplished.